As our national vice president, Naseem Mahdi, said last week at the press club in Washington, D.C., the world is shrinking, and we need to find a way to live in peace with everyone. With the horrific terrorist attempt on May 2nd here in the heart of Times Square, it is obvious that the stability towards peace is in jeopardy. As Muslims who believe in the Messiah, we also believe an essential step to eradicating the mentality of violence is to understand that Islam requires loyalty to your country of residence. So number one, we are saying terrorism, condemnation of terrorism is not enough. We need to talk about loyalty to the country. Number two, we are saying by data, by scriptures, that that's a part of Muslim faith. And number three, we are posing an option. If you're unable to reconcile your identities, if you feel, if someone feels that terror, terrorism is the way to express their differences of opinion, we suggest that simply leave this great nation of ours. Love it or leave it. We don't say this to be derogatory. I want to be very clear. We're not making a liberal or a conservative statement. We're trying to say this is a part of our faith. So why live a conflicted life? Let me end by clearly addressing all my fellow Muslims in the U.S. A true Muslim can never promote hatred against his fellow citizens, nor, for that matter, against the ruling authority or government of the time. Yes, dissent is the highest form of patriotism, but dissent does not include killing innocent people. How do you have them come to an understanding that even though some of the things that are coming out in Western society go against their, the, their beliefs? That's an excellent question, and I think the term I always use is Muslim Americans. We need to raise a generation of Muslim Americans who have those two concepts. And we very squarely tell them, look, football can be cool without beer. You don't have to shave your beard in order to fit in. If you are a Bilal, you don't have to always turn into a Bill. It's okay to remain as a Bilal. And if you wear a hijab, yes, you still could be a very smart, professional, working woman who may not need liberation. You may be doing this by choice. So we give those very clear, specific examples as to what you don't do, but at the same time, serving in the army, there's no conflict there. You should not have any questions about that. When president declares something to be a national policy, then that's our national policy.